purpose, you had a plan You hold my future in your hands And I believe it's true You reached out and you rescued me You gave me love for the world to see And what I do and the words I speak yeah, I belong to you It's simply amazing
morning, friends, and thank you for joining us for Wake Up and Worship. If you were with us on the weekend, you know that we have been following Jonah's story, and when we left him, uh, he had finally followed God's plan for his life, and he told the people in Nineveh God's message. When they heard it, they repented, or they turned away from their sin and chose to follow God. What we learned this weekend is that God's plan for you is bigger than just you. Through you following God's plan, others might be saved. Saved. That's exactly what happens in Jonah's story. He finally does what God asks him to do, and because of it, the people in Nineveh are saved. Now, that's pretty amazing. It makes me really excited to think that if I follow God, other people might choose to follow him because of me just doing what God asks me to. That's pretty cool. The Bible tells us that each of us, as we live for God, are supposed to live as an example to others so that if they do watch what we're doing and start following us, they'll see that we follow Jesus and they might choose to follow him too. And so if you really believe that God can use you, and I hope that you do, I want you to remember that God's not waiting to use you until you're older. We're going to look at a verse all week long in Wake Up and Worship that shows us how God wants you to be an example to people around you so that he can start using you right now at whatever age you are so that others might see you following God's plan for your life and because of that, they might choose to follow him too. And so let's look at that verse together. It says in 1 Timothy 4, 12, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. In other words, don't let anybody say that. You can't be used by God, or you're too young, you don't know enough. God wants to use you right now. It says, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. And so this verse tells us that, especially while you're young, you're never too young to be an example to people in these five ways. And so if you want to ask yourself, how can I know that I'm setting a good example? An example that if people are watching me, they might want to follow Jesus too. That I'm actually following God's plan. And because I'm following God's plan, others might be saved, just like we saw in Jonah's story. Well, you need to look at these five areas that you're supposed to be an example. These five areas where you're supposed to make sure you're living God's way and not your own way. And so the first one that we're going to look at today is that very first one in 1 Timothy 4.12. It says, be an example to all believers in what you say. And so this verse reminds us that our words are important. What we say can point people to Jesus or it can even point them away from him. Now, that's kind of a scary thought. Are my words pointing people to Jesus? The Bible talks a lot about words. It says, um, we're going to be in Proverbs, looking at just a few of these verses, but I would encourage you to take a look at more verses on your own. Do a little study and find out all the different things the Bible says about words. You could probably spend a whole year studying that. But let's look at Proverbs 12, verse 18. It says, Some people make cutting remarks, but the words of the wise bring healing. This shows us kind of two sides of our words. Our words can cut or hurt, wound people, or they can bring healing. Now, the healing that people need is they need to know Jesus so they can have a relationship with God. And our words can either cut people, hurt them, or they can heal, they can bring life and point them to Jesus. And so I want you to think about your words. What do you say to people? That if people are watching and listening to your words, what do they hear? Do they hear things that point them to Jesus? Or maybe that hurt and point them away from him? We have to think about what we're saying. Maybe you've heard it said um, that words are really easy to come out of your mouth, but impossible to bring back in. I have an example to show us that. But here's a verse that tells us why it's important. It says in Proverbs 10, 19, too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Basically, this verse says uh, you might want to just not talk because then you can't get into trouble. You won't end up sinning. Now, God does want you to open your mouth. We see that God uses Jonah's words to save Nineveh when he tells the message that God sent him with is when they are safe. So you do have to speak. You can't just be quiet for the rest of your life. But 
Be careful about just talking all the time. Think about what you say before you say it because you might end up saying something you regret or you wish you could take back, but it's impossible to take our words back once they're said. It's kind of like this toothpaste. You can do this challenge at home if you have some extra toothpaste laying around or you can get some like at the dollar store or something. But you might challenge like your siblings, like who can squeeze this toothpaste out of the tube the fastest? And so you get it all out. It comes out so easy, right? This is like less than 20 seconds to get all of it out. But then if I asked you, okay, now get it back in the tube. <laughs> You'd be like, what? That's impossible. It is, you're not getting that back in here. It's not possible. And that's how it is with our words. They just roll off our tongue. They come out so easily. And so easily we might say something like, I hate you, or you're awful, or you're dumb. These words that can hurt people, or really be sin, that point people away from Jesus from our example. And instead, we need to think before we speak and Remember this verse from Proverbs that says too much talks leads to sin. It's kind of like if your parents ever told you if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Because we want to make sure our words are pointing people to Jesus. Through your words, others might be saved. All right, one more verse for you. It says in Proverbs 10, 21, just two verses down, the words of the godly encourage many. I love this. It's saying that if you are a follower of Jesus and you're living in that way, you're living a godly life, then your words actually bring encouragement to others. That's because you're going to say things like, God loves you and cares about you. Here's something I read from the Bible today. Let me tell you what God says about that. You're going to encourage people because of the godly life that you're living. Your words are just going to follow that because it's in you. That's what's going to come out. And so I have a challenge for you. This week I want you to think about your words a lot and how what you're saying is either pointing people to Jesus or away from him. But today specifically, I want you to make some time today to use your words to encourage others. So you can do this with what you say, but you can also do it by writing or making a video if you maybe can't be face to face with someone you want to encourage. Use your words today to point someone to Jesus or if they already know him, to be encouraged in their walk with him, to get to know him better. And so write a card, make a video, or just encourage a family member in your home or somebody in your neighborhood. Use your words to point them to Jesus. And before you do, stop, pray, ask God to show you who to talk to and what to say. Because the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is there. He'll fill our mouths with his words, especially when we're telling people about Jesus. And so ask that he would work through your words today and then get out and use them. Do something, like I said, a video, a card. You can write a note or you can just say something encouraging to a brother, a sister, a mom, dad, somebody like that who maybe just needs to know that God loves them and you do too or you're proud of them. Use your words to encourage and point to Jesus or find someone who doesn't know him and use your words to tell them all about him. How cool is that? God's plan for you is bigger than just you. When you follow God's plan for you, others might be saved. God wants you to follow his plan for your words, for what you say. Be an example in those things, like 1 Timothy 4.12 said. And because of that, others might be saved. I'd love to hear how your challenge goes. And tomorrow, we're going to look at another way we can be an example. So I'll see you then at 945.